We're here to talk more about voter suppression. It's a representative from Orange County, California, Congresswoman Katie Porter. Welcome to the show, Katie. So great to have you on. Thank you for having me. You are impressive in so many ways. And I love all the work you've been doing on the Oversight Committee for the, the Postal Service and everything. I think that President Trump has been successful, I'm going to use the word successful, in scaring people about voting by mail. Like, I'm a little wary of it now. Is there anything to be concerned about, from your point of view, about mail-in voting? Well, look, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, President Trump is scary. Yeah. And so I think it makes it easy for him to then scare people. <laughs> yes, um, yes. So I think that we are hearing a lot of questions, a lot of concerns about vote by mail, about mm -hmm. what if it doesn't get delivered. We're also seeing states push back the other direction, which is getting people mail-in ballots even earlier than before. Sure. And we're making sure people understand what the alternatives are that let them vote safely. Um, and so one of them, which is a great alternative that we offer here in Orange County, is you can drive by and vote um, and drop your ballot off right there to a real person. Mm -hmm. um, we also have drop boxes. And let me tell you, those things, that, that concrete's going nowhere. Yeah, that feels a little safer. <laughs> but this is well, crazy. Well, yeah, because, I mean, Postmaster DeJoy, when I questioned him yeah. in the oversight hearing, he didn't know anything about how much it costs to mail things. Yeah, he didn't know what a postcard was. <laughs> he stipulated to me he doesn't know anything about postage. I know. So I, I think it's hard to have a lot of confidence there. Yeah. And there are all these other in-between ways to vote. And that's what we encourage people to learn about and think about. Yeah. Now, in your time on the oversight committee, from uh, the grilling of DeJoy, uh, did any actual information come out of anything that was intentional? Throughout the hearing, he'd said, I didn't make these changes. That was one of his defenses. Yeah. So I, I didn't even ask him. I just said, well, you said you didn't do this. Who did? Uh -huh. And he responded, I don't know, <laughs> which is really, really troubling. Crazy. I, it's crazy how blatant things are, you know? And since the gutting of the Voting Rights Act in 2013, like over 1,600 polling places have actually closed down, you know, really disenfranchising areas of people of color and everything. Is there anything that Congress can do uh, to kind of stop this blatant racist shit from actually happening? Absolutely. Two things. One uh -huh. is providing resources to state and local election facilities so that they can improve their practices. We also should be enforcing the Voter Rights Act. Uh -huh. I mean, I think one of the things for people to remember is well, a lot of people are questioning right now, will my vote get counted? Can I vote safely? That's actually, those are actually questions that people in our minority communities, in our African-American communities, have been asking for a long time. Yeah, voter suppression, it's so insidious too, Katie, because when you're like an informed voter who's on it and everything, it's hard enough to combat things. I was purged from a list a couple of years ago and. Honestly, I was thrown because it happened at the polling place, you know. Trump has said if there's not a winner by election night, you know, on election night, that he considers that invalid. Isn't that voter suppression? In my own election, it took eight or nine days for the, for the ballots to be counted mm -hmm. and for me to be determined to be the winner. And that's pretty typical. I think one of the things those of us who, who are used to a lot of vote by mail, like we are here in California, sure. need to be doing is helping the rest of the country understand how does it work? I am concerned that Trump and his cronies are undermining our democratic institutions from within, everything well, everything from the CIA. Yeah, you feel that way because they are. Yes, everything from the CIA to the CDC. I, I think one of the things is to understand, and I've heard some people say this, like, we've just got to get through election day. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's right. Um, I think that we have to be prepared for an enduring period of strong yeah. democratic engagement to rebuild these agencies, to rebuild trust mm -hmm. in these government institutions, because Trump has is sort of his whole presidency, as many ways has been about sowing distrust of government officials. Yeah. Do we have anything to fear? Like, do we need to hide the nuclear football on election night or anything like that? The best cure, the best antidote that we have right now to voter suppression to election interference, mm -hmm. um, foreign or domestic, to misinformation, um, is actually big turnout. Yeah. All of those tools, all voter suppression, all misinformation, it's based on influence at the margin. So if the margin, if victory grows to 10 or 15 or 20 percent, and those tools are really only capable of moving 2 percent of voters, 
then the problem goes away. And so I just think mm -hmm. that's why we're really emphasizing to every single person why they need to vote in this upcoming election. Can you just give us one last word of encouragement to the people out there who may be unsure or getting these messages? Yeah, I would just remind everybody that your vote is your voice. Yeah. And believe that your vote matters. And the, you know, the vote that I can guarantee you doesn't matter is the vote you don't cast. Well said. Congresswoman Katie Porter, everyone.